All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Um, this is Mr. Vanderpool, and today uh, we're going to go ahead and continue to talk about individual markets. Now, we've talked about the two sides of a market. We've talked about the demand side or the buyer side of the market. We've talked about the seller side or the supply side of the market as well. And today what we're going to do is we're going to throw those both in and we're going to have a analysis of a complete market. And we're going to see how price um, is a very, very essential part of making that market work. So let's talk about equilibrium. So when supply meets demand, there is what is called equilibrium in the market. So equilibrium creates a single price and quantity for a good or service. So it's basically the perfect price because if the price was too high, people wouldn't buy it. If the price was too low, suppliers would not supply it. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, show a supply and demand curve now in equilibrium. And this is what it looks like. Uh, to start off with, we're going to have, always have price represented by the variable P on our y-axis. We're always going to have quantity represented by our, the variable Q on our x-axis. We're going to have a upward sloping supply curve, which we're going to represent with the variable S. We're going to have a downward sloping demand curve, which we're going to represent with the variable D. And where supply meets demand, we have what's called equilibrium. So we are going to have an equilibrium quantity and price. So this is our equilibrium price. So we draw a little line over from where the supply meets demand. We have our equilibrium price. Notice this is a lowercase p. And then we have an equilibrium quantity and we draw a little line down from where supply meets demand, and we have our lowercase q. So that represents our equilibrium price and our equilibrium quantity. Now, at any price above equilibrium, the quantity supplied is going to be greater than the quantity demanded. And so you're going to have a surplus, and that's actually going to push prices down to equilibrium. And then you, if you're at a price below equilibrium, then the quantity demand is going to be greater than the quantity supplied. You're going to have a shortage, and that's going to push prices up. So naturally, if a, the price of a good is not at equilibrium, it's going to be pushed back to equilibrium. So that equilibrium price really is that perfect market clearing price. So let's talk about shortage and surplus. We've already, I just mentioned this, but here it is in PowerPoint format. So uh, if the market price is above equilibrium, the quantity supply is going to uh, exceed the quantity demanded. This is going to create a surplus. There's too much of something, and that's automatically going to push the price down to equilibrium. If the market price is below equilibrium, the quantity demanded is going to exceed the quantity supply. And there's going to be more people demanding it than supplying it. That's going to create a shortage, and the price is automatically going to be pushed up towards equilibrium. All right, now we're going to be working on supply and demand scenarios. So there are four steps in figuring out supply and demand graphs. The first thing here is don't overthink. It's easy to overthink and think that when you have a scenario, it's going to change supply and demand and, and you you'll get overwhelmed. Don't overthink. Generally what's going to happen is you're going to figure out a, what determinant was changed and you're going to shift either supply or demand. You're generally not going to be shifting both. Okay, so you've got to think which curve is affected and why. Figure out what is the determinant from the scenario. Shift the appropriate supply or demand curve. Okay, keep that supply, keep supply and demand separate there. You need to know if it's an increase or decrease in supply or demand so you can shift the curve the correct way and just go ahead and graph it. So really, three steps here. First thing you're going to figure out is what is the determinant that is being addressed in the problem. You're going to shift your supply or demand curve 
the correct way. And then that's going to give you a new equilibrium price and a new equilibrium quantity. So let's look at our first one here. So first thing we're always going to do is we're going to start off with our supply and demand curve in equilibrium. We have price on our y-axis, we have quantity on our x-axis, we have a downward sloping demand curve, we have an upward sloping supply curve, and where those meet, you can see we have an equilibrium price and an equilibrium quantity. So this is our market as of right now, before you actually hit the scenario. Then we're going to go ahead and pop up the scenario. So first of all, our market's going to be oranges, and we want to tell what uh, our market is going to be. And the scenario is this. What happens to the market for oranges when there is a frost that hits Florida? So the first thing you have to think about there is you have to think about what is the determinant. We've talked about tripe. We've talked about nice jag. And we have to figure out what is the determinant that is being addressed here. What we have is we have basically a natural disaster here. There is a frost um, that is hitting Florida. Okay, so that's the N for nice jag. It's a decrease in the physical availability of resources. So once again, I want you to tell me what is the um, what is the determinant. So it's N, natural uh, or man-made phenomenon, and that is the determinant that is being addressed. Now, once you know that, you want to figure out which curve is being shifted. So we know N for nice jag addresses supply. So we do know that is it is supply that is going to be affected. So then finally you look at the scenario, it says what happens to the market for oranges when there is a frost that hits Florida? And naturally that is going to lessen supply. So therefore, the supply curve is going to shift to the left. So then you go ahead and just do that. Shift the supply curve to the left. And our new supply curve is uh, going to be called S1. Now we have a new e equilibrium that occurred after the scenario. So where our demand curve, our original demand curve D, meets our new supply curve S1, we are going to have a new equilibrium price and a new equilibrium quantity. So we can see here that the price went up. As we go up our y-axis, price is going up from P to P1. We're also going to see that our quantity went down. So as we go left on our x-axis here, we can see that quantity went down. So you also have to tell me that equilibrium price went up, equilibrium price, excuse me, equilibrium quantity went down. You can either write that all out, or you can go ahead and just put P up, Q down. That's a kind of a shorthand way of telling me that the price went up and the quantity went down. Now this would be interpreted as the price of oranges going up and the quantity of oranges going down. So equilibrium price for oranges went up, equilibrium quantity of oranges went down. All right, so let's move on to our next one here. So our market is downloaded music. And we start off with a supply and demand curve in equilibrium. So this is the scenario. What happens to the market for downloaded music when the price of an MP3 player or an iPod goes down? So once again, the first thing we have to figure out is what is the determinant that is being affected? So we have downloaded music. 
MP3 players or iPods. So those are going to be related goods, in particular they are going to be complements. So we're going to have a decrease in the price of a complement. So you've got to tell me the market, downloaded music, and you've got to tell me uh, what is the determinant. And in this case it's a um, it's related goods, a decrease in the price of a complement. So now we have to figure out, we know our determinant is related goods, okay, that's the R in tripe, so therefore you're going to see a change in demand. So now we have to figure out which way does demand, the demand curve shift, the left to the right. So if the price of an MP3 player or iPod goes down, that means more people are probably going to be buying it, which means that they're going to be downloading more music, which means the demand is going to go up. So we're going to shift the demand curve to the right. That is what we do. So we go ahead and draw our arrow here. And we have our original demand curve D. We have our new demand curve D1. And that created a new equilibrium where our old supply meets our new demand curve, demand one, we have a new equilibrium. So let's see what happened to price and quantity. You can see price went up from P to P1. You can see quantity went up from Q to Q1. So as we go to the right on our x-axis there, quantity went up. So the final thing you need to do after graphing is just go ahead and tell what happened to price and quantity. Price went up. Equilibrium price went up, equilibrium quantity went up as well. Remember, you can also put P up, Q up using arrows. That would be fine with me, too. All right, so let's look at us another scenario here. So our market's going to be downloaded music again. And we have our supply and demand curve in equilibrium with price on our y-axis, quantity on our x-axis, downward sloping demand curve, upward sloping supply curve, equilibrium price, equilibrium quantity. So what happens to the market for downloading music when the royalties paid to a song artist goes up? So music downloaders have to pay royalties in order to artists in order to play their music. So we're saying that the royalties are going up. So the first thing we have to figure out is what is the determinant. And those royalties are an input cost for this downloaded these downloaded music companies. Remember that input costs is a part of nice jag. It's the I in nice jag. So we have an increase in costs. Now, nice jang addresses supply. So we know the supply curve is going to shift. So which way is the supply curve going to shift? Well, now if the supplier has to pay more for royalties, they're not going to be able to make as much money. Um, and so therefore, the supply is going to fall. They're going to be making less profit here. So, so the supply curve is going to shift to the left from S to S1. Now where S1 meets D, you have a new equilibrium price, P1, new equilibrium quantity, which we will call Q1. So the last thing you'd have to do is you'd have to tell me that price went up, quantity went down. You could either write that out or you could put it in symbol form, P up, Q down. All righty, one more here. So we have the market for stake. So the US goes through a boom economy. What happens to the market for stake? Once again, we have our supply and demand curves in equilibrium. First thing we have to do is figure out what is that determinant? So we have a boom economy, incomes are going up. So we have I in tripe, which is income. So we have an increase in income because steak is a normal good. 
Now remember, tripe addresses demand, so therefore demand, the demand curve is going to be the curve that is going to shift. In all these scenarios here, you're only going to be shifting one curve. So now we have to figure out what is the curve that we're, uh, we already figured out it's demand. Now is it a decrease or increase in demand? Well, if incomes are going up, people are going to buy more steak. So the demand curve is going to shift to the right from D to D1. Now where D1 meets S, you have a new equilibrium. Our new equilibrium price is P1. A new equilibrium quantity is Q1. So the last thing you'd have to do is you'd have to tell me what happened to price and what happened to quantity. Price went up, quantity went up. So you can either write that out once again, or you could put that in symbol form. P up, Q up. All right, so before we go on to our next video here, I want you to try one of these on your own. So the price of milk doubles. What happens to the market for cereal? So what I want you to do here is start off by putting your supply and demand curves in equilibrium. Go ahead and tell me what is your market. Tell me what is the determinant. Shift your supplier demand curve, label everything correctly, and then you're going to go ahead and tell me what happened to the equilibrium price and quantity after the shift in either supply or demand. So take a few minutes here, and go ahead and do this one on your own, just like, just like the previous examples that I addressed. When you're done, you can move on to that next video.